What's the point of Lent? Many young people will come to the priest, maybe in, on the side or in pastoral counseling or at a retreat, like Father Shea is attending the Life Teen Retreat or in confessional. What's the point of Lent? I don't see the point. <clears throat> Why the fasting? Why the praying? Why the abstaining from meat? Why the doing works of charity and going to confession and giving up something like a favorite food or a TV show? Or what's the point? The point is the gospel that we hear from today. The point is the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. See, the Lenten observances are a means, not an end, to a goal, an ultimate goal. And on the second week, on the second Sunday of Lent, the church pulls back this veneer and we can see the transfiguration of Christ. We can see the foretaste of the resurrection and that's the point. That's the point. In the gospel, Jesus goes up with Peter, James, and John to a high mountain. I think it's really great that John got to go with them. <clears throat> and they're asleep in, in Luke's gospel. And can you imagine it says they were in a deep sleep and then they became fully awake. It's almost like you wake and you're not sure that you're still in the dream state. And you see Jesus transfigured, his clothes dazzling white, shining like the sun. Shining like the sun. And we hear the voice of God say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We see a snapshot of the resurrected Jesus, body and soul. There was a priest who in his youth, in his boyhood, went to the church with his parents. And he saw this beautiful stained glass window, the light shining through it. And he asked his parents, who are those people? They said, oh, my son, that's the communion of the saints. And ever since this boy experienced that, he became a priest, he always thought of the saints as the people of the light. The people of the light. So we hear in the Pauline epistle today that we will be as Jesus, that he will raise us body and soul, that our citizenship is in heaven. We are supposed to be people of the light. Saints, that's the point of Lent. Lent is a journey to the resurrection, espousing these observances that are like working out in a gym. It's not an end, it's a means to good health. And the end is the resurrection of Jesus, and then our final resurrection from the dead. When we go to join the Father, someday this earthly body, this lowly body, St. Paul says, will be reunited with our soul and glorified, purified, perfected. That's the point. We are to be saints, to shine like the sun, the people of the light. Today we celebrate one of those points of light, we could say, St. Patrick. Now the whole country celebrates St. Patrick's Day. I see many of you wearing green. <clears throat> and when I was growing up, <clears throat> I always felt this attraction to St. Patrick not knowing exactly why. It's like I don't have any Irish heritage, maybe a tiny bit of Scottish heritage, a little bit of British heritage, mostly French, mostly German. Why this attraction to St. Patrick? And I knew that there was something beyond the green beer and the getting sloppy on this day and people that aren't Irish pretending that they are 
I said, there's got to be something more than that green dye they pour in the river in Chicago and turns the whole river green. There's got to be more to it. And when I got into the seminary, I started to learn more about St. Patrick, that he himself was not Irish. That was good news for me. <laughs> it's like, okay, I can like St. Patrick because he's not Irish either. He's this young man growing up in Roman Britain, Roman Breton. His dad was a deacon. His grandfather was a priest. Now, this is in the early church, so these things were not all that uncommon. But most likely, his grandfather and his father were clerics because they had a connection with the government and it was advantageous for them, maybe even tax-wise and so forth, to be clerics in the church. It was a different time in the church back then. He remembers, and he, he, he has some writings that I think are worthwhile to read. He remembers that he was not a devout child. He liked to play. And when he was about 16, Irish invaders came into his part of the country. He could have been in Scotland, he could have been in Wales, what we now call Scotland and Wales, we don't know. But they took him prisoner, along, he said, with thousands of others, and brought him back to Ireland. Now these are pagan peoples, Druids and other kinds of pagans, that take him back to Ireland and enslave him. And he said it was then that he started to pray. He said when he was out in the fields, he would pray. When he was up in the mountains, he would pray. He was there for at least six years until he made his escape. And the Lord told him, you're going to leave. And he went to the coast and he found some sailors that were going back. And from what he says that they had these Irish hounds that they were taking back to Roman Britain, back to Gaul. It's very likely they took him back to Gaul, northern Gaul, and then he made his way back home. His parents were still living in the same home and they were glad to see him. But he had this vision, this dream. This man from Ireland was holding letters, appeared to him in this vision and says, come back and walk among us. Imagine, it's like, no, you people enslaved me? Now I'm gonna come back? No way. But he took it to heart. And he eventually call, felt called to priesthood and studied under St. Germanus in northern Gaul, most likely. Became a priest and then eventually a bishop. And there was another bishop sent to Ireland, but he died. I don't even know if it, for sure if it was en route, but they sent Patrick. And Patrick met with one of the Druid chieftains. And the Druid chieftain tried to kill him. Imagine, you just get there and they're already trying to kill you. And somehow God intervened and he converted this chieftain. And that was important because the chieftain's a leader. And then there's this trickle-down effect. And for 40 years, Patrick traveled the country, converted, set up monasteries, established clergy, and eventually died there, I believe in 461. We hear the stories about how he taught about the Trinity using the shamrock. We don't know for sure, maybe he did. Our earliest indications of what we celebrate now with individual confession and absolution go back to Patrick and his monks all the way back to the fourth and fifth century like Patrick brothers and sisters we are called to be people of light the point of Lent is the resurrection the transfiguration our own transfiguration as human beings when we go to be with the Father and our earthly body is 
restored to our soul and glorified, as St. Paul says, because our citizenship is in heaven. We are just sojourners here. We are called to be people of light. Let us imitate those who have shown the way. Let us imitate those like St. Patrick.